But joining me now on the pitch at Parvey Road is Wendy United ladies manager Keith Bonus. Keith, first of all, it's the first interview we've done, so welcome to Welling. Thank you. Um, you've been at the club now over a month. Uh, how have you finally settled in? Yeah, a little bit longer than a month from when, we, when I first kicked in. Yeah, really good. Um, good first meetings with the, with the board and then with the players. Obviously, it was a, a new venture and a new level for me to come around to, but I'm, I'm a local lad. I live around the corner, so a little bit of a no-brainer to come and see what it was about and obviously aware of the changes and been made very welcome. Obviously, you've come in to take over the, the girls' team and um, how's the re recruitment been? Have you had have successful, successful recruiting players? Yeah, I'm happy. Um, you know, it's a level where you, you obviously can't go and get players and, and offer them any, any financial reward, but it's making sure that, that they're welcomed here and that the club respect them. And I've managed to pick out one or two what I'll call experienced players, but I'm also really happy with some of the youngsters that are already here and the players are already here. They've already, for me, improved just through what we've been doing since pre-season started. First game last week here at Parview Road against Bexhill, a 5-1 victory. Uh, a great start. Yeah, just a minor complaint that we conceded the goal right near the end. and We're almost as disappointed with that as, as if we'd lost the game. But, uh, yeah, you can't argue with that. Five goals in. Probably should have been more, if, if we're, we're honest. But uh, three points, first game of the season, what everybody wants. And what's it like to play games here at Parfum Road in front of a, like, a crowd? I mean, it's really important for the girls? Uh, massively, and hopefully the, the crowds will improve as the season goes on. Obviously, success breeds interest, and if the girls can, can play good football and get good results, hopefully it interests a few more of the, the men's team supporters. We're plugging that in the programme. I hope people are seeing that. and We'd love for more of them to come as the season goes along. It's, it's like anything. Players love people to be supporting them from the side. Um, but yeah, being at, being at a stadium is great for any women's team. It's kind of the norm now, ironically, it, and, and after the Euros and stuff, it, it should be getting stronger and stronger links. But the board's desire to link the women's team with the club closer this year was a massive reason why, why I took up the offer. And as you say, it is important to play in front of a crowd and um, it gives the chance for the for people that have never seen a ladies game to actually come down and watch it live and, and see some of the skills that are on offer. Yeah, I mean, women's football's developed so quickly over the last 10 to 15 years. At the highest level, obviously, Euros recently, again, I'm quoting that. If you looked at the standard of that, I was at Wembley, lucky enough, for the final. You know, my wife's a former England player, former England goalkeeper. The technical standard has, has always been up there and around. The obviously difference is the physicality side of it. but. If you just want to come and watch a game of football where people are enjoying playing and enjoying being out there on the pitch, then yeah, it's well worth a watch. Division 1 South, obviously the league that the team are in, very competitive. What's your hopes for the season? Uh, I wouldn't have come here if I didn't believe we could get promoted. So yeah, I'm looking at winning the title. Um, being realistic, I know there's one or two teams out there that are going to challenge that. The likes of Hastings, Herne Bay, who we're now playing next week instead of Hastings. I, I don't know how that's happened. Um, Bromley have strengthened obviously come up into the league and they look quite strong in pre-season. But yeah, there's, there's, I'd say there's probably four or five of us that should be up there challenging and we'd definitely be one of those. And you mentioned the Euros, as you say, you was at the final. I mean, what was that like that, that evening at Wembley? Uh, well, emotional to say the least. Obviously sitting with, uh, with Kopi, it's my missus. You know, she, she got 60 caps for England back in the day and played in World Cups, played in Euros, but never got to that level. She was sitting there looking around Wembley Stadium with like, 70, 80, 9,000 people there. She was in tears because she was one of the, the stalwarts of the game and dreamed of moments like that and it never quite got to that stage. Don't get me wrong, she played in front of 30s and 40,000s in, in World Cup games and, and obviously we were in the FA Cup three times when we were at Charlton, and four times in essence, but she didn't play the last one. But, but that, I, I just looked at her and I could see the tears in her eyes and she was just looking around going, wow, this is where it's come to. And, She'd love to have been there and out there on the pitch with them, but obviously her day was a different day. But she's got no regrets on that either. But the game's moved forward so, so much, and it's great that Wellin want to be a part of that movement. And as you say, like they're, they're uh, unbelievable performance. So building on the back of that, how important now is it to make access, like football accessible for all girls in schools and clubs? It's massive, and again, um, Kopi did a couple of TV interviews afterwards for Channel 5 News and GB News and she she quoted that straight away. It's got to be. I mean, it is in some, but it's not enough. But all sports should be accessible. It isn't just about football. It's about getting girls interested in sport full stop. But obviously with the interest in the game now after Euros, there should be an escalation of girls wanting to play. So we need to accommodate that desire. 
and then we're building future stars for the England side as well. Well, they've certainly gone down in history. I mean, I must mention one of the players, like Chloe Kelly, when she went back to QPR, her club, I mean, she was given an amazing reception. Um, they will go down in history. That team will go down in history. There's no choice. There's no choice. You know, they're the first team to win a trophy since 66. It's an England team playing football and winning a trophy. Of course, they've got their own history, you know. A couple of them now have retired since. So Jill Scott and Alan White have both announced their retirement since that. So that was the pinnacle of their careers. And they've had good careers as well. But it's amazing for them to go out on such a high note. And, and, and the FA have to take credit for the, the managerial appointment with the, with the Dutch gods, Sarah Wyman. And how amazing would it be if like, some of your team here at Welling United it, went on, on to represent three Lions? I mean, that'd be amazing. A couple of the younger ones, you know, I, I say to you, you can never stop dreaming. You always have to be realistic. But there's a couple of 16 year olds in this side. You know, they've definitely got that potential. But again, it's being given other opportunities, other clubs recognising that. There's at least two here now I'd be happy to recommend on if people ask me, uh, at least to have a go at a higher level. Uh, and that's what it is though, you've got to get to that high level before you get recognised by the England Talent ID uh, system. So if, if we're doing well, it will raise eyebrows and hopefully people will take notice of what they're doing. And the next match is for your team, for the ladies? Tomorrow, a one o'clock kickoff down at Eastbourne. So yeah, a journey for the girls, um, leaving around 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, they've made the kickoff earlier, which hopefully means we'll get back earlier, obviously. But yeah, they, they didn't have a great result last week, but we can't afford to to assume it's going to be an easy game. As I said, I'm missing four starters from last week due to, to injuries and uh, we've got a couple of the girls who work for the Met Police who are on duty on the Notting Hill Carnival tomorrow. So that's part and parcel of this level of the game. You, you kind of put up with that kind of thing. But we've got a good enough squad. We've got around 28 players in the squad at the moment. So I've managed to cover that and I'm quite happy with what we're going down there with tomorrow. And next home game, I believe, is next weekend here at PVR. It is, yeah. Originally it was Hastings, which for me are definitely one of the, the title challenges. They they won by a big scoreline last week. They've got a couple of players that used to play for me way back when I was at Millwall. So we were expecting a tough one, but it's been changed. I'm not sure why. Um, so we're now playing Herne Bay, but we're still at home. Two o'clock kickoff here next week. So it'd be great to see a lot of people down here. Absolutely. Well, welcome to Wellington, Keith, Thanks and best of luck for the season. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Cheers, mate.